Matthew 5, 38 to 42. Jesus' teaching about turning the other cheek has more to do with retaliation after an insult than it does with using force in situations of like justice, police, or military. It is about minor offenses, insults, and disrespect, not about every act of violence that could be done to you or your family or your property or your country. It does not mean that we should never defend ourselves or protect others. It does not mean that we should allow people to steal from us or do violence against us. You see, the religious leaders were twisting the words of the Old Testament to justify their revenge on people for insult or, or disrespect. They would quote, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, meaning, I'm going to get you back. But those words were not about personal revenge. Instead, they were written for a court of law. That the, that the court that punishment should fit the crime, an eye for an eye. The saying means that the courts are supposed to be fair and should not give more punishment than the crime <clears throat> deserves. The saying is not a saying that it's okay for a person to take their own revenge. That's not what it's about. But that's the way they were using it. <laughs> We should resist wrong, but we shouldn't do wrong just because someone insults us or doesn't respect us the way our pride says they should. Now, Jesus shows us by his own example that injustices <laughs> should be met with firm and challenging responses, but that, but that, you know, Injustices should be met with a response, but insults should not become personal vendettas. The insult and offense should be let go, but injustice should be treated with the appropriate legal and judicial response. See, the robber who is cruising the neighborhood should be stopped, and the bully should be resisted. There is no suggestion in Jesus' teaching that the law and its penalties should be ignored. But the backhanded slap of an insult should be brushed aside. It's okay to respond with justice, but not with malice. See, in Jesus, justice and love can be side by side. Now, see, we see the exact same thing in Paul in Acts 16.37. He knows that what has happened to him and the way he's been treated is illegal. We observe that he shows tact and respect, but he also challenges them with firmness and demands justice. He doesn't just roll over like a doormat, but neither does he seek personal revenge or any kind of retaliation. So what about when we're hurt in a personal relationship? If it's an insult, Jesus says it's a good idea to talk to the other person about it. That'll be in Matthew 18 when we get there. Jesus says we should try to make it right and to reconcile with people. Uh, we want to do everything possible in love to break down barriers between ourselves and other people. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If it's an insult, ultimately you have to be ready to let it go. If it won't resolve and turn the other Just, cheek, don't seek retaliation or, or hold any bitterness in your heart. Truly, let it go and forgive the other person. But if it's really an injustice that has been done, we have a range of responses to take appropriate legal 
Action. Self-defense is biblical. We see that in both Abraham and Nehemiah. Now, the choice to defend yourself has to be a choice of, of wisdom and discernment and conscience. A believer is not required to defend themselves, but they can choose that. Um, they can choose that even when other action may be possible and even warranted. Uh, so a believer may also choose to defend themselves. It can go either way. It's a matter of love and conscience. In Romans 14, Paul teaches us that situations and people are different. We are, we are trying to make the best, wise, and godly choice we can. And not to judge others when their decision might be different than ours. Everybody has to live by the faith that we've been given. Christians are supposed to be peace-loving people who advocate justice but not revenge. The point is not never to strike, but instead never to strike in vengeance. Vengeance belongs to God. We are to give up the, I'll get you for what you did to me in exchange for <clears throat> grace, mercy, and love. If you are simply an angry person responding, responding with anger, then stop it. Jesus wants justice, but also love and forgiveness and reconciliation. And verse 40 reads, and if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. It's not so much telling us to, to let people abuse us as much as it is encouraging us to be generous. Paul writes in Romans 12, 20, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. See, being a Christian means we are free to take insult without revenge and free to be generous. Jesus is telling us to love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 42 says, give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Jesus is not teaching that you have to give away your stuff anytime anyone asks you to. Nor is he saying that you have to give whatever people ask. That's not what he's saying. He is advocating that we be generous people, not greedy, selfish people. We give freely to others because God has given freely to us.